Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at dynamic paints in Blender. It can be used for a wide variety of things like blood dripping down, um, bullets indenting a surface, um, footsteps in the snow, tire tracks in the dirt, whatever. So let's delete our cube and add a canvas. And I'm just going to show this with a plane. All right, there we go. Now the dynamic paint is found in the physic properties of an object. Right, so let me drag this to the left a little bit. And we actually have a dynamic paint setting there. We can click and then we can choose the type of the dynamic paint, right? There's two options. We got a canvas and a brush, just like IRL, right? Just like you paint a canvas in your home. So let's add a brush object as well. Shift A, mesh, UV sphere, scale this down and let's move this up a little bit. There we go, shade it smooth just for the sake of it. And then we can add an dynamic paint there as well. Now this one is obviously going to be the brush, right? So choose brush and so this one has to be canvas, right? So add a canvas and add a brush and you have your initial system set up nicely, right? So if I go to my viewport shading or render view, we have EV enabled. Um, we can actually go and see how this looks, right? So by default, we're not going to see anything because the two of these are not linked yet. So how do we link them? Well, we need to go to our canvas and we need to set a brush collection, right? So let's select our brush, press M, new collection, sphere, or let's just call this brush, right? That's easier. And then set this to be your brush. All right. So now by default, we have multiple options to set up right so we have paint we have displays we have waves and weight as well and um, so i use three of these quite a lot paint displays and waves right so let's just go to displays first right so let's just move this down while we play our animation nothing's gonna happen reason why is because we don't have any geometry to displace right and that is something you need for every brush system okay because we have a vertex format beautiful which means that we need geometry so let's subdivide our plane a bunch of times with a subdivision modifier move that in front set this to eight and eight and let's set this to simple there we go and now if we play this and we actually move our sphere you can see that we're ending up with a displaced geometry right and we can shade that smooth while we're at it and just to redo that a little bit, you can see that we're getting a nice displaced geometry according to our brush, right? So this is already pretty much a tire track. You can imagine how that works as well, right? You just need to set your reel to be the brush and you displace your geometry, right? And there's obviously a bunch of settings we can change, like the max displacement, the factor, and we can make it dissolve as well over time, right? Which is also quite interesting. Um, let's go to the top, set the dissolve to 50, right? And if we play this and we move this, you can see that our displacement is actually changing. For example, if you have an elastic surface or something like that, right? Beautiful. So that is in very easy terms at the displacement brush, right? So let's set our canvas to be a wave now, right? So just play this and you can see exactly what happens, right? So it's going to be adding some waves, right? So a boat in the water or a particle falling into the water. If you do this from the top and just drop it down, right? No particles or no waves. Move this down, boop, particle drop. Quite easy, quite nice, right? So that is all quite easy to set up. We got some settings we can change, velocity. We got the wave type, right? The vector and the clamping. Um, it's pretty much speaks for itself. Just try it out and well, have a little play with it. So uh, the interesting one comes when we go to set our canvas to be a paint, all right? And it's also the trickiest to set up, but also not that tricky. So all we need to do is make sure, and this is a very important step, that we have an output, right? And by default, it's gonna be red, which means we don't really have that output yet. So just hit the plus sign for both of these, and we will have the output to play around with. Now, by default, our initial color is going to be none, but I'm going to set this to be a color and black, 
The exact reason is because most of the times I'm going to be using my paint mask as a mask, right? And that is the issue if you have white and black. So for my brush, I'm going to set my paint to be white. The easiest is to just type in FFF, FFF in the hex. And there we go. So let's open up a shader editor now for our canvas. Hit new and just set this to be an attribute called DP paint map and just add this to the color. There we go. So if we go to top view now, play our animation and move our brush, you can see that we're leaving behind a nice paint mask, right? It is quite pixelated though. We can help a little bit of that by checking anti-aliasing. There we go. Right, it's just gonna be a little bit less pixelated, okay? But not quite, <laughs> quite as smooth as we want until we really up the geometry. But I don't want that. So I'm using a little bit of a hack for this, okay? Which means geometry nodes. Hit new and hit shift A, named attribute. And there we go. If you don't know anything, um, named attribute, I mean store named attribute. There we go. Just connect that up. If you don't know anything about geometry nodes, don't worry at all because this is going to be incredibly simple. The only reason I'm using a geometry node setup for this is to blur out my paint mask, right? And believe it or not, blurring something out is way easier in geometry nodes than it is in texturing, okay? So whenever I have a mask, I usually just go into geometry nodes and blur it out there, right? So hit shift A, find a named attribute, and this is going to be our DP paint map, right? Connect it to the value and set your name to be blurred map, for example. Hit shift A and find a blur attribute, right? It is that easy. We got a blur and there we go. This is all we need. Now open up your shader editor as well and change this from DP paint map to be blurred map, right? And there we go. We can instantly see something is happening. And if I set this iterations to be higher, we're blurring this out more and more and more, right? Which means it's going to be smoother, but also a little bit blurry. But if I add a color ramp to that map right there, a uh, color ramp, and just crank up these values a little bit, so we can see that we're getting a very smooth mask here. And if I now play this and move around my sphere, this is way smoother than we had before, right? Without adding any geometry and doing crazy things in texturing, we now have a quite smooth mask. Beautiful. So another thing we can do is add a little bit of drippage, right? So let's rotate our mask RX90 and move this to be inside of our surface. There we go. And now we can actually set up um, a new drip system, right? And that is going to be under our effects right there. Okay, effects or your canvas, we can enable drip. What that does is your paint is going to be dripping down. Beautiful. Where is my, there it is. My light was gone for a sec. There we go. So now we actually have some drippage going on. Now, usually it's going to shrink down a little bit as well. So let's just enable shrink and play this again. And you can see that our paint is shrinking down quite nicely now. <laughs> Isn't that easy? We have a dry value as well. Um, and that is basically going to affect our DP wet map. So we have a paint map and a wet map, right? The output and the wet map. If we enable that to be wet map, you can see our wet map is going to look slightly different because it's going to be drying over time, right? So the wet map is going to be a mask and that basically shows us how long something has been there already, right? So if you add a DP wet map here and control shift click that, and we go into our dry value and set our time to be, for example, 50. And we now play this. You can see that we're actually getting a drier value um, there at the bottom and a stronger one right there at the top because it's going to be dripping down, right? So it's going to be um, expelling pretty much our paint from here. Um, so if I now play this and move this around, you can see it is actually drying as it goes, right? So that is our wet map. Okay, so we can use the both in combination um, well, for any type of shading, pretty much. I'm going to set this back to be our paint map. Paint map. There we go. And set this back to be blurred map. There we go. And then just enable back our principal PSDF. 
And the other thing that is quite interesting is if you open up your um, your drip, you have a weight section there. And what is a weight? What is an effector? Well, hit shift in your viewport and look for a force field. And this is what we can use as an effector for our drip hitch, right? So we can add a wind, for example, rotate this. There we go. And if we play this, it is already going to be affected by our wind. All right, so the wind is pushing our dripping paint to the right a little bit. Amazing. Um, so we don't really need to add that as an effector collection. Um, but if you don't, it's going to use any effector in your scene. Right? And if you do add it to a collection, it's just going to use that collection. So make sure that you know that. Okay? So that is already pretty much it. Okay? Now, what I will do is play this for a sec. You know, play with the scaling a little bit just move this around you know have some fun there we go everything is dripping nicely and if you want this to have some well pump to it we can actually add a bump map as well right now if you want to use this to mix between a paint and your canvas material for example we use this mask to mix between two materials right your canvas material and your paint material so hit shift d Shift A, mix shader, and let's just make these, mix these two up like that. So the upper part is going to be our canvas, which is going to be red, for example. Or no, let's just keep that as whitish or black. Yeah, let's make it more black. And then this is going to be our mask. So that's going to be the mixed vector. And then our second one could be any color we want. Blue, red, whatever. Right? So let's make this blue. There we go. And now we can actually use the same mask, right? This mask as a normal map, right? So hit shift A and find a bump. And anytime you have a black and white mask or map that you want to use for a normal, it is good to use that as a height value. There we go, right? So you can see <laughs> we now have some height values. It is too strong and also too, um, well, too blurred. So I'm just going to duplicate that. And crank that in there. Now we can control exactly how this is going to look. Now I think the B spline looks best for this because we can actually control more of that smooth transition. Something like that. And then we can change our distance to be more of a thickness that you will see for dripping paint, for example. Like that. Right? And then play around with your values. Like so. And there we go. Right? We got dripping paint. Isn't that interesting i'm gonna delete this for a sec and just see how it looks dripping down like that right some beautiful paint dripping down on our surface isn't that cool all right so that is basically your dynamic paint system um or your dynamic paint setup in general because we covered pretty much the basics of everything and it's a lot of fun to use right so please play around with it in real time it works perfectly fine just remember that um, the, the the detail you can get of your paint map is highly dependent on the amount of geometry, so your subdivisions as well. You can cheat a little bit by adding the geometry node set up with the blur, right, to get a sharper mask, but still the detail you will get is going to be related to your subdivisions, right? So keep that in mind a little bit. So that will be all. I hope it was, well, handy. I hope you had some, some good information there that you can use for your projects. Um, please, if you like this, leave a like, a comment, subscribe. We would highly enjoy any one of those. And then we will see you in the next one. All right. Cheers and bye-bye.